United States Army transport, the C-97. It is a cargo version of the long-range B-29 bomber, now in action against Japan in the Pacific. A self-contained loading ramp is automatically operated. Motorized war equipment rolls directly in. The huge plane is capable of carrying many tons of military freight or scores of passengers. The crew has its own automatic entrance. The plane is constructed with two decks and a two-story cabin. hundred and forty feet of wing spread, a hundred and ten feet long. The C-97 is the Army's largest transport. It will speed critical war supplies on their way to the fighting fronts. Landing in New York for a welcome furlough at home are 1,300 combat veterans of four United States armies now fighting on the Western Front. All bear wounds received in action, and all are veterans of two or more campaigns. to a nearby army camp, then home for 30 days with their families. Men and officers of the 1st, 3rd, 7th, and 9th armies with a short vacation from grim combat. in uniform, aiding the Allied war effort. Spars, women members of the Coast Guard, complete concentrated courses to qualify as radio operators. They march in review at graduation exercises at Atlantic City, New Jersey. Diplomas from Spar Commander Dorothy Stratton. These newly qualified Coast Guard women will replace male operators on shore, releasing them for sea duty. In Italy, the largest contingent of Army women, WAX, ever to arrive in this theater. They perform many duties in supply, communications, maintenance, and other branches of the Army. The WAX set up in the field under the same conditions as their brothers in arms. Here, as in other battle zones, the WAX are helping mightily to speed military operations. A transport to Britain brings a contingent of Negro Army nurses. Highly skilled in their profession, these women have volunteered from all parts of the nation. They are welcomed by General Davis. In the Pacific, Angels of Mercy, evacuation nurses of the Air Force. They supervise the transfer of wounded from forward positions and then care for them en route to ambulance bases. A stern, demanding job, but one that saves lives. At Fort Myer, Virginia, Women's Army Corps members stand at attention to honor a sister WAC, Private First Class Mary Jane Ford, who is receiving the first soldier's medal ever awarded a woman. Private Ford receives the decoration for heroism in risking her life for a drowning soldier. The Philippine Islands, strategic battleground. Locked in combat with the Japanese on Leyte Island, American forces suddenly plunge to Ormoc on Leyte's west coast, a 200-mile amphibious operation. Veterans of the United States 77th Division make for shore. They have been secretly shifted from Eastern Leyte's battle lines for this surprise blow. 
Heavy equipment comes ashore in succeeding waves and churns through the ruts of the beachhead. Troops move into the town of Ormark, three miles away. Operating under Generals MacArthur and Kruger, directs the drive to split up and destroy thousands of enemy troops. Near Ormark, a sharp three-day battle is won. Infantry closes in on an enemy that fights back savagely. Anti-personnel shells burst high in the air. Wounded come in under fire. Pictures from Ormoc bring home the suffering and sacrifice of men in just one battle area. by the Ormoc landings, the Leyte campaign is won. Immediately, a new offensive against Mindoro Island, 600 miles away. Scores of invasion craft race for shore after two days and two nights en route over water. Now, striking for the first allied foothold on the China Sea, they hit Mindoro. The Navy delivers support. Enemy air attack, beaten off. Shells and rockets punish Mindoro's defenders. Landing troops come in. The formula of amphibious operations perfected in scores of landings like this in the Great Pacific Offensive. landing now directed against Luzon Island and Manila itself. And with concentrations of power piling up throughout the island, the campaign for the Philippines moves toward a climax. <laughs> 